We all know how hard it is to be locked down and for this pandemic to be producing twists and turns that surprise and shock us daily. But for some children who are locked down with families under pressure, this can push them over the edge. Today, we launch an Evening Standard Special Investigation into the hidden young mental health crisis. We have spoken to students, head teachers, parents, counselors, and mental health experts to understand the severity and causes of the crisis and to shine the spotlight on what many are calling the hidden mental health crisis of the COVID generation. 500,000 new cases of children and adolescents suffering mental health problems are forecast by a leading research charity this year. And the Center for Mental Health said comes on top of another 1 million young people under 18 who already have mental health problems that are forecast to get worse. One of these 500,000 children is a teenager who goes to school in Northwest London. He used to be a loving, enthusiastic child with a good attitude in school. We've called him Jason to protect his identity. In the last lockdown, I stayed home and helped my mum, but this time they told me I should come into school because I am classed as vulnerable. I can't handle lessons and I don't feel like speaking some days. I get scared because I'm having some very dark thoughts. Sometimes I shout at my teachers and just get up and walk out. We have spoken to half a dozen head teachers across London who all testify to this worrying, rising increase in children with mental health problems. In one school, Beacon High, Andrea MacDonald, the deputy head teacher, told us that despite being just halfway through the second term of this academic year, referrals to children and adolescent mental health services have doubled. She thinks the worst is yet to come. We also spoke to Emily Haston, head teacher at Goldfinch Primary School in Wandsworth. This is what Emily had to say. We have a large number of children who before COVID did not have mental health problems, but since the start of the pandemic have developed one. Um, and in some cases you can expect it because children live with parents with them who, who themselves have mental health issues, but in other instances you couldn't have predicted it. Some children have suffered, um, suffered memory loss of areas of the syllabus that they'd already covered and tra trauma can do that. It affects memory and we have yet to see the impact of this uh, lockdown and I think the, the worst is yet to come. The stresses of the second and third lockdown have yet to work themselves into the data but what we do know is that the poorest families are four times more likely to have children with mental health problems than the wealthiest 20% of families. The level of child and adolescent mental health problems we're seeing today is unprecedented. It's the highest since records began. There's a 50% increase since pre-COVID where lockdown has really affected parents and children very badly. What is particularly sad about this is that it's hidden uh, most people don't know about this, so it's behind closed doors. The government and the NHS are woefully unprepared. And the scandal and the pity is that the NHS has decided to spend very little on child and adolescent mental health, which has led to a widening deficit of care. It's particularly important since the more disadvantaged parts of the population have rates three or four times higher than those who are more privileged. The NHS spend for outpatient child mental health service is about £50 per child per year, which is why CAMS, Child and Adolescent Mental Health Services, is so emaciated. At present, only about a quarter of children get, with any disorder level get seen by CAMS, so that means three quarters don't get any specialist help. That's in normal times, it's probably worse now. The reason I think this is a tragedy is because we've got lots of effective treatments for anxiety, depression, disruptive behaviour, ADHD, anorexia. We can do so much good. And it isn't just, you know, these illnesses are short lived. They last for years so we can make people's lives happier and less distressed if we invest in proper services. Why is children's mental health deteriorated so quickly? Reasons include being locked down with parents and siblings under pressure from lost jobs illness, death in the family, even domestic abuse which is on the rise, 
and excessive parental anxiety usually translates into anxiety in the child. But Ricky Emanuel, child adolescent and adult psychotherapist and formerly head of child psychotherapy services at the Royal Free, gave another reason for the astronomical increase. So for adolescents, their friendship group is key. It's their oxygen. They need their group to grapple with the problems and manage their internal processes. And different people in the group usually play different roles. So there's so much more than missing their friends. They need them. They're, not, they're dependent on them. And it has to be in person, not just via social media. So if you take them away, if you cut them adrift, they can unravel and fragment. And that is why you're seeing so many of them struggle now. Some of the young people we spoke to bear out exactly what Ricky had to say about friendship being such an important issue for them dealing with problems that have arisen over the pandemic and during lockdown. We spoke to several 18 year olds and other teenagers. This is what Michael, who is 18 and studying for his A-levels had to say. For me, the challenge is not to fall into bad habits and keep some sort of schedule I am predicted two A stars and an A, but I'm struggling with my motivation to learn that, that and that makes me anxious. With all of us cooped up at home, it is hard to find quiet space to revise. It's a dull existence, stay in a house all day, then go to sleep. It's easy to feel tired and listless all the time. You think, what have I got to look forward to? The tale of COVID is expected to be long. The impacts are not yet known. As we move forward, we will be looking and speaking to more educators, to more students, and to more people involved at the heart of this to uncover what exactly is going on and what needs to be done. You can follow all these stories on standard.co.uk.